where I got this book. And I, it's a nice enough cover, so I opened it up. The book is called I Wish My Teacher Knew How One Question Can Change Everything for Our Kids. And I thought to myself, what kind of marketing tool is this? And I opened up the book, and I couldn't stop reading. And this book not only broke my heart, but gave me hope for the future. The woman who wrote the book is the teacher who started this sort of national movement, uh, Kyle Schwartz. Kyle, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. So much for having me. And your first name is Kyle. Yeah, it throws everybody off. It's a boy's name, but so I'm a lady. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a girl named Kyle. Yes, it is. All right, you got cool. it. Kyle Schwartz, you live in Denver, Colorado, and you're a teacher. I do, but I was actually out your way for a family reunion just a couple weeks ago. Oh, you have family from St. Louis? Uh, well, I have family from Missouri. Oh, so okay. So we were up in Cahoka, a little town called Luray, population 98. Aha. Uh-huh. But, yeah, my Missouri connections run very deep. All right, good. Good to hear it. All right, but you live in Colorado. <laughs> we won't hold that against mm-hmm. you. Um, and <laughs> tell us the story. How many years ago... Did you come up with this idea to ask the kids this this one simple question? Well, I've been doing it every year that I've been teaching. So it's been about five years that I've been doing it. And um, really just in my first year of teaching, I wanted to get to know the kids better. And I it was as simple as putting up on the board, I wish my teacher knew, and having the kids finish the phrase. But last year I found one of the notes that the kids wrote me, and I put it on Twitter, and saw the power of social media firsthand when teachers from all over the country and then all over the world started doing the same lesson with their kids. And it really started a movement and I think a very needed conversation about the realities kids face when they go to school. No question. Okay. So let's, how did you, how did you come up with the idea? And when you, and when the kids answered the question, did they put their names to the answers? Um, Well, I came up with the idea, I think, just in talking with teachers about, like, what's going on with this kid? How can I reach out to that kid? And so instead of making assumptions about the kids, I really just let them tell me. But um, I kind of left, as far as um, putting their names on it, I kind of left the options open for kids, which I think is a powerful thing for teachers to do. So I said, you can put your name on it, or you can leave it blank, or you don't even have to do this at all. But I think one thing people are really surprised to hear is not only did most kids put their name on it, but almost everyone wanted to share theirs out to the class. So even very personal, poignant notes such as, I wish my um, teacher knew that my parents are going through a divorce, or I wish my teacher knew that I don't have food at home. Those type of things that for adults we'd think that we would keep secret, but for kids they wanted to share that with their classmates, and that was very powerful to see. How about some of the notes where the kids say, I wish my teacher knew that I don't have any friends in class, right? So would they get up and say things like that too? Yeah, they would. I um, There was one example, and I talk about this in the book, of a kid who just read out, I wish my teacher knew, I don't think people like me in this class. And, you know, that was kind of heart-wrenching to hear, and I was a little nervous about how the kids would react to that. But, you know, they just all kind of started shouting out, like, no, we like you. Like, we think you're great. We like you. And I think one thing I didn't include in the book is the kid, he actually kind of had the mind, this mind that worked in a little different way and was a little analytical. And he actually created, like, a little survey that said, like, do you like me? Yes, no, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> And I, not in all cases, I would have let that happen. But in this case, I knew that the results would be positive. So, like, literally, he passed the survey out to the class, and they all checked, like, yes, we like you. And for that kid, like, to have tangible evidence that kids liked him in the class was life-changing for him. So you're standing up in front of what, these were third graders? Yeah, third graders. So the third graders, and when the, when the kid says, I don't have a pencil to do homework with, there's... You didn't take a class to teach you how to deal with that situation. Um, No, I didn't. I went through a slightly different teacher preparation program called a teacher residency, which means that, like, I was a student teacher in a school for an entire year. And I really credit that um, residency type of teacher preparation with helping me be prepared. Um, But it's kind of one of those things where you have to respond in the moment. So something like, I don't have pencils at home, that's very actionable for me as a teacher. I can just give that kid pencils. 
Um, but I think as a teacher and to see what happens every day in our schools where more than 50% of kids in public schools in America live below or very close to the poverty line, to take it from I'm giving this kid pencils to now I really want to advocate for these kids, help them advocate for themselves, and let other people like you and your audience that may not be in a school every day know what's really happening, that we have these kids that don't have resources, and we're missing out on so much potential if we're not going to invest in our education. The book is called I Wish My Teacher Knew, How One Question Can Change Everything for Our Kids. Kyle Schwartz, yes, it is Kyle Schwartz, and she <laughs> is a female. Um, Kyle, so uh, ha- have you, so so what was the one note you, you put on social media that sort of started the whole fire? Um, it was actually a note that we were just talking about that said, I wish my teacher knew I don't have pencils at home to do my homework. Um, and it was actually a note that was like three years old and I found it in my house and I just got on Twitter and I took a picture of it and it just kind of exploded from there. But from then, I've been able to hear from teachers, not just like in the United States, but also in other countries who are doing this exercise with people I wish my teacher knew. But um, I've heard from like therapists that are having their clients say, like, I wish my therapist knew. I've heard from social workers that are doing, I wish my foster parents knew. And I even heard from the vice admiral of the Coast Guard who did, I wish my admiral knew. So it's kind of this universal idea that, um, so, you know, we all have blind spots, and the more that we invite people to share with us their life experience, the better we can work together. It really is extraordinary that this has now taken on. You've been profiled in ABC News and, and, and national news outlets, which has just sort of helped to sort of grow the whole concept. Yeah, it definitely has gotten more attention, and I think it's, I would really encourage other teachers to just share what's working in their classroom because I feel like there's a million little things that we do every day to help kids, and if we shared with each other, we could just, you know, reap the benefits of that. How, what do you do, you know, I don't have pencils to do homework it is pretty easy. What do you do when the kid says, you know, um, I, haven't, I haven't eaten all week because my dad lost his job and we're all hungry? Um, you know, how, how do you deal with those types of issues? Well, hunger is a very big issue in our schools. And I think that most people don't realize how acutely it's felt by children. But I have children every single day in my classroom who don't have co- consistent access to food. So um, our school takes that very seriously. And we um, have things like we send home like extra canned food with um, some families. And we have like fruit snacks every day for them. But one thing I do in my classroom that I share in the book is I just have a drawer of food. Like I have a drawer of granola bars and graham crackers and Either they're things that have been donated or I've got myself or that are extras. And I just tell the kids, if you are hungry and you need food, it is always going to be here for you. And you don't have to ask. You can just take it. And you know what happens is the kids who really need the food, they take it. And they are able to, you know, either they take it home or they have it at recess or they kind of sneak it during class. But it's that kind of attitude that is we know that there is a need for kids. And if I'm going to have them learning at their best, I need to make sure that that need is met. Well, how, how, how do you keep from going home and crying your eyes out every night? Uh, well, I do cry sometimes because there are things that are very difficult to see and hear at school. Um, be, and quite frankly, I think a lot of times these notes have been called heartbreaking or um, you know, very sad in some way. But the truth is that it's happening. And people, I, I really just hope that it raises some awareness that we've got a lot of kids who are suffering in this country. And, you know, if we step up and invest in their education, we're going to just be such a more powerful country. We'll have more powerful schools, more powerful cities. And it's, it's very difficult to hear, but it is, you know, like my honor and privilege to be able to support kids every day. Uh, I don't want to necessarily turn this political, but a lot of uh, political rhetoric over the last couple of days and, and weeks. And here's a note from, I, not, might have been your, your student, but it puts a whole new meaning on it when you see in a kid's handwriting, I wish my teacher knew how much I miss my dad because he got deported to Mexico when I was three years old and I haven't seen him. I wish my teacher knew. 
I mean, that that sort of, you know, that sort of boils down all the rhetoric and all the political talk into, hey, that's a real life consequence, something you've got to deal with and teach while he's going through that issue. Exactly. Um, And, you know, quite frankly, I have never taught a group of students who have not been affected by deportation. And I think that political or not, whatever decisions that we're going to make as a country, we need to really think about how it's going to affect kids and what that really is going to mean for kids. And as a teacher, um, you know, I really need to respond to that, that 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 feeling that their father is gone is a really like acute feeling for this child. And that's going to be something they're thinking about on the daily basis. And, you know, it's something that if I have empathy for and I can respond to and I can give a voice to the student and allow the student to express themselves, then they're going to be able to learn better. Kyle Schwartz is the uh, teacher who started uh, a true movement. I wish my teacher knew. Um, It's the book, How One Question Can Change Everything for Our Kids. I wish my teacher knew to now all sorts of companies, businesses. I think every company should ask that question. Every boss should ask that question. I wish my boss knew and then have a sort of the new suggestion box so that Mm -hmm. people can really understand what's going on and and sort of look for your blind spots. Kyle Schwartz, the book is uh, bookstores, Amazon.com, you name it, you can find it. Kyle Schwartz, I wish my teacher knew. Kyle, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. 921 here, Big 550, K.